Hello everyone, welcome back. Here is Van Amsen with another live coding challenge. So today we are diving deep into a fascinating coding problem that's all about vowel and permutation. So let's dive in. Our task today is from Lead Code Daily Challenges. It's marked as hard and is titled Count Vowel Permutation. And the problem gives us a number n and we have to find out how many strings of len n can be formed using the five vowel with specific rules. So let's write it uh, down. So those rules. Uh, so we have A uh, and A can be followed by uh, E. E can be followed by either A or by I. And if we have I, I cannot be followed by another I. So it can be followed by A, it can be followed by E, it can be followed by O, or it can be followed by uh, U. And O, so O now, uh, can be followed by I, or uh, can be followed by U. And U can be uh, only uh, followed by A. So now, uh, since uh, the answer could get pretty large, we need to return it uh, modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. So let's break uh, it down. So given N uh, equal 2, so possible it could be uh, a, E, uh, E, A, E, I, uh, I, uh, A, I, uh, E, I, uh, O, I, U, and also uh, O, I, O, U, and U, A. So, yeah, U, A, O, U, and uh, O, I. So, you can see that uh, we have uh, 10 possibilities and those correspond uh, with arrow in our graph. So now let's dive into the logic. So uh, this problem is essentially about understanding transition or how we can move from one state vowel to another. So imagine a directed uh, graph that I uh, just uh, write it down and the directed uh, edges between the nodes represent which vowel can follow which. So from A, we have a, a directed edge going to E, but none going to I, O, or uh, U, also uh, known uh, to A as well. And uh, now let's think about forming a string of length N. So if we are considering the string uh, last character and it's A, uh, the character before uh, must be an E uh, based on our rules. And this backward approach gives us a hint about the uh, recursive nature of uh, the problem itself. So uh, dynamic uh, programming will shine in a scenario like this. So we start with a base case, which uh, here is uh, n equals 1. And we know that all vowels have uh, a count of 1 for this length. As we move to larger length, we build on the previous count uh, updating them based on our transition rules. So from uh, instance, when considering sequence uh, ending in A uh, for uh, some length N, we know they must have uh, been formed by sequence ending in uh, E for length uh, N minus one followed by A. So the count of uh, sequence ending uh, in A for length uh, N will be uh, equal to the count of uh, sequence ending in E uh, for length uh, n minus one. So this approach guarantee that we only uh, ever count valid sequence and uh, as we are always building them based on the valid transition. So by maintaining and updating these uh, counts for each length uh, up to n, we ensure that our solution is both accurate and also uh, optimal. So, and uh, that's the beauty of dynamic programming, and it's allow uh, us to break down a complex problem, uh, yeah, to a more manageable sub problem, and then build uh, our solution from the there. And by focusing on the transition and understanding the constraints, we can break, uh, yeah, uh, solution uh, and uh, solve it correctly. So, now let's uh, dive into coding part. Uh, as we understand the task and logic. So first, define our mod uh, constant. 
So mod uh, 10 to the 9 plus 7. And now main part. So initialize counts for, for yeah, for all vowels for n1. So a e o u o ones. And now update counts based on the transition. So for in range 1 to n, uh, a next e, a next a i modulo, uh, i next uh, a e o u modulo mod, uh, yeah, o next will be uh, i plus u modulo mode and u next uh, will be just a. So uh, we have uh, a, e, i, o, u, and uh, next, next, also next, uh, next, next. So this is uh, just the case of a uh, space optimization. So we don't need to have a uh, yeah, more than dimensional uh, array. So i, e, o, u, Modulo mode. So uh, we have our transition. We have also uh, optimization with space. So we always uh, have uh, our uh, next uh, cases without uh, storing, uh, for example, two dimensional uh, array. So uh, it's also optimized. So now uh, let's run it to see if it's working. So hopefully it will. Yep. So all good. Uh, so now let's test uh, our solution for unseen test cases. So I'm uh, yeah, submitting it. And as you can see, our implementation bit 94%, 9486. Uh, I think I have even a bit faster. So yeah, just a few seconds. So uh, I get 72 milliseconds, basically uh, quite similar, 96, 94, and beating 95% with respect to uh, memory so it's also uh, really uh, memory uh, efficient and uh, there you have it uh, another problem tackled with a clear approach and smooth coding so remember the essence of solving uh, such problem lie in understanding the transition and uh, pattern and uh, once you get that the rest is uh, just coding so if you found this uh, helpful uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more coding uh, session, tutorial, challenges, uh, machine learning, tech, uh, yeah, and much more. And of course, uh, leave your thoughts uh, and question in the comment section below. And as always, as, yeah, keep practicing, stay motivated, happy coding, and see you next time.